With Avenue, the, the vision of Avenue is that we want the converged, deterministic, time-sensitive network to be a common foundation that we can build applications on top of that can take advantage of the capabilities that IEEE and others are, are developing in, as a fundamental uh, changing point in Ethernet. This is a game-changing technology, and I think uh, all of us are hoping to learn from you guys as part of your question, but we're here to really talk about and really move forward in the next several years with all the technology and the foundation. It's an exciting time to be here, and I think having a you know, the, the deterministic Ethernet, sort of the lowest level of that and the most uh, high performance part is a, a critical part of the system. From IEEE Standard Association and especially from the 802.1 Working Group, we are really glad to be here in this, at this event and, and see our work becoming reality. We all together can be relevant. Alone, you will spend a lot of money and the lessons learned is going to be very expensive. When you think about digitization of operations, when you think about fault computing, when you think about uh, deterministic Ethernet or TSN, um, when we think about um, real-time analytics, all of these things actually are converging. And, um, and I think the key to make these, all of these um, uh, you know, complex movements successful is for all of us to work together. So um, because you see um, all this technology, we see a lot of progress in, in uh, autonomous cars, in IT world, and so on. And we, of course, we want to use that, 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 that advantage also in the shop floor. Yeah? Yeah. So IT and OT coming together on all uh, that kind of sensor technology and real-time technology that we are using in, in, in cars for autonomous drives and uh, in any other areas now coming to the shop floor. And this brings really, this makes Industry 4.0 um, increasing flexibility and productivity really. Wonderful. But let's try to have a sensible use case and implement what we need as opposed to what somebody thinks might be cool. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And uh, I think on the industrial side, we're a little bit further down the road in terms of standardization uh, because there is uh, what we call uh, the, the Shaper Group, which is a, a, a group of willing uh, automation companies that, that meet regularly to drive the implementation of those standards. And that our suppliers are able to quickly deploy products based on the technology that our customers want. What a radical concept, right? You know, we're not into this developing just academic exercises and stuff that's just fun, right? All cool stuff. It's really about developing the right standards and the right technology that actually do something. But if you want to, um, to drive real-time insights, real-time analytics with all the data coming from sensors and edge devices, combination of fog and cloud is absolutely essential. And um, from that perspective, the work that is being done to integrate the fork ar ar architecture with TSN is essential as well, because real time requires TSN. There will be not any one proprietary system that can stay forever and penetrate the standard. So therefore, we believe as Bosch, there have to be open platforms, open standards, and open sources. And we need strategic alliances as we are here today. Very simple. Let's continue to walk the path of standardizing. That's the most important thing. And as the Shapers Group, we are working closely. We are meeting on a monthly basis. We are harmonizing the things. And that's going to be a very successful path into the future. And I strongly believe with that, we are ready to harmonize the communication, the connectivity, and the compatibility across industries. They really don't enable us to find, extract, refine, and distribute all of this data. And we believe that it's deterministic Ethernet, and TSN in particular, that will pave the way for the flow of this data. So we look forward to working with all of you to drive progress in the, in the industry and ultimately to monetize all of this data that's being generated. Working on the testbed is about managing these opposite requirements and uh, uh, doing testbed with uh, so um, uh, relevant companies 
from uh, ITOT and demonstrated that uh, we are able to uh, interconnect uh, PLC from Schneider with equipment from Bosch or uh, uh, a gateway from uh, other competitors or uh, TT Tech uh, TSN equipment is a pragmatic and real, real demonstration of this interoperability. Uh, regarding your question, uh, one main focus right now is in extending um, OPC compendium specification and really having intensive discussions about the right language to identify for the future. That's, you know, there's a whole bunch of inefficiencies in there um, that we're identifying with this test bed, but uh, I think it starts, you know, with the network all the way up to, you know, converging even at the application layer. Uh, as I look at the test bed, the fact that uh, Cisco and Hirschman and Renaissance and TT Tech uh, and analog devices all have uh, network switches that are in there running, and they've been able to build that without necessarily needing to get into uh, the end application protocol that's running over that. I think that's an example of uh, some efficiency that we've gained out of this approach. I think that separation, I think also tying into Avenue to make sure that those layers are uh, composable and certifiable so we know we can take those pieces and put them together. I think that's going to drive a lot of uh, efficiency as we try to actually deploy these solutions in the future. Yes, that would be great because uh, I mean the question was if the inefficiencies were identified by the test bed itself, uh, the inefficiencies were identified by the customers themselves. The customers are in the focus. They have been so far locked in proprietary uh, solutions which um, deliver zeros and ones to the PLC and there it's where, where they then pick from the zeros and ones what they want to have. So they were bind in proprietary solutions in proprietary markets. And that was a, or is a root cause of inefficiency and that's hindering innovation in the means of industrial IoT because there is no interconnectivity in between different protocol solutions. And I think this is one thing which is being solved then by the test beds. And on a technical level here we identify what is necessary to get the interconnectivity of uh, all the different devices coming from multiple de vendors. It's really on the technical level, it's about plugging it in and making it work together. So that's a very, um, um, and, and by that you also create a reality of interoperability because if you demonstrate it can be done technically, it might take away a few of the roadblocks that, that lie in different layers also. So out of a kind of a grassroots type of approach on the technology space, you can also uh, boost interoperability on, on other levels that are non-technology. And in the end, this setup will also help us and the OEMs and our customers to keep the cost low in the in-vehicle network. So the solution is here really to go to a deterministic planning of the in-vehicle network traffic for the upcoming age of the autonomous driving. Now, first, there's so many scenarios that are embedded in this architecture that require deterministic networking. The first one is this. You have a machine and then needs to talk to uh, an application that controls it in real time. That's the deterministic internet there. The second is two applications, real time applications are running together. They have to collaborate. Maybe two robot controllers have to work together within that uh, uh, control uh, CPU. What do we need as automotive suppliers? We need increased bandwidth to really fill all this information onto the bus, regardless if you have a smart sensor or if you have a massive domain controller within the vehicle. And we need better compression, which uh, gives us the opportunity to work with the data and um, in this case, we mean that the, the uh, compression algorithms itself should be smarter and not to use too much calculation power. We believe there is no magic to deal with this trade-off between performance, power consumption and flexibility. There is no universal solutions like the one and only technology which would solve everything. 
if you believe there is one unique technology, or if, if, this is ex if you believe this is existing, I'm very keen to hear. We believe in heterogeneous solutions. We believe in combining flexible cores, like ARM cores, or more embedded cores, like R7, together with DSPs, or hard hardwired um, accelerators. This is the way we approach it, and this is the way we can deal with this trade-off between performance and power consumption. It's not a single SOC that can deal with all that as of today. So, so we need multiple SOCs that needs to be tied together with a high-performance network. This is where deterministic Ethernet comes in place. But on top of this, you need to build out a platform that can host this variety of applications, being it safety critical applications, be it functional or feature applications side by side, make it able to integrate all this functionality from a rapid prototyping process to a serious production strength process. And then as Bernhard pointed out, having all the validation, running all the thousands of test kilometers in simulation and in real cars to show production strengths and ultimately get safety for the customer. So we have now the capability of really having a kind of a dual box, a platform where we can bring all these technologies together, integrate controllers where it makes sense, but also having very performant silicon germanium processes together with the controllers, putting them together, maybe sometimes in a single chip module. Uh, so the whole thing, so that's really the innovation part. And then produce that with repeatability, with the same expectation of zero defects, and all of that for a quite long time, which I think really sets apart whether you want to just play in a consumer part or whether you're really committed to the automotive industry. My personal uh, opinion and my personal take uh, about this near-field sensing with uh, radar technology is that uh, this will come up uh, in the very near future uh, uh, to the car and it will revolutionize uh, uh, a lot of functions uh, up to 40 meters yeah, with very, very uh, uh, high accuracy and, and precision. The uh, acquisition of Mobileye uh, allows us to understand and tune the data processing needs and the connectivity and computing needs to provide enabling technology and enabling platforms to accelerate innovation in the car industry uh, and drive the time to market down for innovative solutions at a more cost-effective uh, price point. Because at the end of the day, we as an industry profit more if the cake gets bigger fast than trying to argue and get a bigger slice of a small cake at the moment. And our objective is to ensure that the, the cake gets big and that the enabling technology is in place for the supply chain to tap into it. Uh, so the, the level from technology point of view finally between what is in the car, what needs to be available in the system is not that different between level 3 and level 4, but it's more important what's the use case scenario that is behind that. Uh, and uh, I think we have heard um, today several the, the word it's how important is um, seamless collaboration. Uh, and specifically if it comes to, to uh, more requiring use cases or even to level four, that means the, the collaboration, that means then we have the HD map, we have a, a, a direct connect to the cloud via 5G. And that means that the player that have to work on such a, a project uh, will increase. So the, the kind how we collaborate in the industry, that's getting more and more important. Truly exciting time to, to really help um, you know, remake you know, this idea of a software-defined car. I mean, it, it's staggering when you think about the amount of code that's in a vehicle today. Like, typically over 100 million lines of, of code are, are on average in our vehicles today. And when you put that in, in, in context of avionics, we, we put the shuttle into orbit with right around 500,000 lines of code. So uh, truly, really innovative problems uh, for us to be part of and something we're really excited about. The industry is really now for co-opetition. Even the big giants uh, in, uh, out in the market uh, do not aim any longer to do everything by themselves. They are partnering, uh, they uh, 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 
going into alliances, uh, they uh, going into in, into network, and I think uh, that shows uh, the great uh, tasks and the great challenges uh, we have the next uh, uh, years uh, and decades. But it shows also uh, the great opportunities. And that's the the type of challenge that we're trying at least at Renaissance to to address because investments are so massive today on all new technologies that we cannot afford to make wrong decisions or we cannot afford to develop any more regionally uh, relevant solutions. We really need to find things which can be reused across the borders. We need that cooperation of the chip manufacturers up to the end users and uh, also the middleware means the industrial segment who produces the machines uh, and the equipment to collaborate. Otherwise, you know, this thing what we talked about today will not happen. Yeah. And this is very clear to me now. Yeah, I mean, first of all, for me, I think it was, um, it's, uh, it's actually amazing because I think five years ago it was just a dream, right? And uh, I remember we, we started the conversation about uh, um, sort of transforming how we, uh, how we connect, how we run the business. And um, uh, I think the overall the meeting exceeded my expectations primarily because of the diversity of people here, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and um, it's sort of funny because we almost finished each other's sentences, right? And um, uh, it is remarkable because when you think about it, how, from how different walks of life we all, we all come from, right? And, uh, how different experiences we have. We make the next step in terms of not only competition, but in terms of from, uh, from technology and, and process point of view, uh, to find methods to collabor collaborate. Um, I see a big difference uh, in, in this audience when we had the first forum. Mm. 18 months ago, now we have the second one, there's a big difference. We have accomplished a lot of things, but we are not at the point where we are delivering a solution to our customers. Yeah. And what I'm saying is, is, is more uh, true for our automation industry, uh, maybe it's a little different for the automotive industry and for other areas. But in general, I'm wishing for that, that uh, our customers uh, will really give us the feedback you have delivered against your promises. Yeah. Um, the second was, uh, is uh, continue to invite your your uh, friends and your competitors to join us, right? And uh, um, uh, we, we want this village to grow to be a, lar to be a large city. And uh, um, it's great to see 200 people here, but hopefully in the next event will be 1,000. So, um, um, because I think we need pretty much everybody in an industry to go with us, because the folks who will not go with us, I think, will be in trouble. Yeah, yeah and, and oh. here we the forum is officially closed. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.